All right. So, buenos dias, bom dia, mis amigos. All right. So, I got a great comment here from Wedden one zero five one nine one nine. He says, "There's a YouTube channel called Awake Souls, teaching a millennial reign and calling Jesus by a different name. They're all about Hebrew and the Hebrew calendar." They have a new video called End Times Eschatology. All right, so now I found that video. And I just want to give you some insight into what I'm seeing. All right, and I'm assuming this Yahweh Wushuhi, I can't even say it. I assume this is the different name that they use for Jesus. All right, so we're going to do a word search and read all the various many passages of the, this word in the Bible. And this might take a while folks, so hold on. Oh wait a second. Oh, no. It's never mentioned in the Bible at all. Not even a single time. Alright, so the claim that they have to make is that my Bible is wrong. All right, so that's a huge problem. All right, so you're saying that I can't believe the Bible that I hold in my hands? The Bible that I hold in my hands does not have that word at all. That's a huge problem. All right, so let's first of all establish the fact that the Bible cannot have any errors in it whatsoever. The Bible has to be perfect. If you have a book that has errors, it's not the Word of God. It's the Word of men. And there's a distinct a distinct difference between the Word of God and the Word of man. Alright, so in the Word of God, right here in Psalm 24, I'm sorry, Psalm 34, verse 20, it confirms the fact that the Bible has to be the perfect pure word of God it has to be it cannot have one single error in it if it has one single error it is not from God because of verse uh, of because of Psalm 34 verse 20 he keepeth all his bones not one of them is broken all right so you can't have one single mistake at all now this is talking about the Lord which is the Word of God and the Word of God in heaven and the Word of God on earth alright and Jesus is the Word of God now in the New Testament we read a parallel verse John 19 verse 36 for these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled a bone of him shall not be broken confirming once again that the Bible that you hold in your hands has to be perfect All right, the Word of God cannot be broken now we also we can point to one more verse where the Lord himself says in John chapter 10 verse 39 the scripture cannot be broken. All right. And again in John chapter 19 verse 36, a bone of him shall not be broken. All right, so the word of God cannot be broken. Now the Bible that I hold in my hands, it is from God. It cannot be broken. The Bible that they hold in their hands is very broken full of broken bones now okay so think about this these guys are saying that my Bible is wrong and at the same time they're they don't believe in any Bible at all they don't believe in any Bible in any language anywhere in the world at all not now not ever 
they don't believe in any Bible at any time in human history. And think about that, all right? Because they do not have a book that they can hold in their hands and claim that it is from God. Whereas I do. I have a Bible that I can hold in my hands and proclaim with absolute certainty that these are the words from God. And there's not a single mistake in my Bible. Not one. Not one bone is broken. Not one word is wrong. All right. So, anyway, so if you've uh, followed me, uh, you've heard me uh, talk about that extensively. So I'll move on to point number two. All right. In the, I'm just going on the title alone. All right. This is, I'm, I might play a few seconds of what they say, but on the title alone has all sorts of problems. End times eschatology chart update. All right. So that's, <laughs> that tells me that they're just making it up. Update. You're updating the eschatology. You're making it up as you go. Uh, you, what's there to update? And, and I'm telling you, it's at, these guys, they, they don't have any understanding of the Bible whatsoever. All right, because there is no updating the Word of God. Psalm 119, verse 89, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. We're not updating the Word of God. It's already settled. All right, so this is ridiculous. This just tells me, hey, we're making it up as we go. We don't believe in Jesus. Now let's get back to that word Jesus, okay? First of all, it, you know, let's do it this way. There's something in the Bible that says something. Let me see if I can find it. I got to think about this. Let me see if I can find... Oh, right there. In Acts chapter 4, verse 12, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Now, what is that name? Because this is important. This is a big deal. It says, No other name. No other name. None other name under heaven given among men. There's only one name. Only one name. And what is that name? Well, in verse 10 it says, Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner neither is there salvation in any other there is no salvation in any other name other than the name of Jesus all right that's it that's it it's not yeah that won't say that name won't save anybody it's only the name Jesus there is no other name all right <clears throat> now again the, the this eschatology chart update that's tells me you guys are making it up as you go and then it says here with 2023 fulfillment dates 17 days to trib question mark is that a joke well what are you guys doing seriously that, that sounds like a joke to me 17 days to trib it's, what are you guys trying to start your own religion here? Trying to make a copycat religion? That's what it looks like to me. And it looks like you're just mocking the Word of God. That's what it looks like to me. And of course, isn't it interesting that the Bible actually tells us this is what's going to happen in the end times. Jude, verse 18, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly hair gel or excuse me that's not it 
who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. All right, and there's another verse here. That's not good enough for you. <laughs> All right, let's try this one. Second Peter chapter three, verse three. Knowing this first, that there should come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust. This is exactly what these guys are doing. Scoffers, mockers, walking after their own lust. They don't believe in the Bible at all. They got 19 subs, man. It's incredible. And what's the Bible say about uh, the last days? Uh, you know, it's interesting here. I want to point out two verses. But in 2 Timothy 3, verse 13, Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Seducers, evil men, waxing worse and worse. And that they certainly are seducing a lot of people, aren't they? I mean, this is clear evidence that we are very close to the end. I mean, today could be the day. There's nothing preventing the Lord coming get back today. I mean, it might be a long time from now, but it could be today. There's nothing that has to happen that we're aware of before the Lord Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. All right. And then the other verse that I wanted to show you real quickly is in Matthew 24. And of course, I pointed this out uh, numerous times, just about every video, when Jesus is asked about the end of the world. And the very first thing he says is, Take heed that no man deceive you. Many shall come in my name, saying, I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. And that's clearly what these guys are doing. All right, they're just one of a bunch of people. <clears throat> but um, also, um, actually, uh, in verse 24, uh, Jesus says, um, They shall show signs and great ones. Is this what I was looking for? Oh, actually, I wanted to go somewhere else. Mark. All right. So Mark 13 is a parallel to Matthew 24, and it's the same thing. And the, it's the same uh, moment in time. All right, when the disciples asked Jesus about the end of the world. And one of the things that I just want to use this verse just to draw a parallel to the verse that I showed. Um, that false Christ and false prophets, all right, the false Christ are the Antichrist, which is the popes, and the false prophets are the false teachers that are that have arised, uh, that have risen, and they shall show signs and great wonders to seduce. Now that word seduce is very interesting because that's exactly what these liars or false teachers are doing they're seducing people and they're seducing people with these types of statements of eschatology, eschatology chart update oh we gotta tune into that and then oh 17 days to trip oh I gotta tune into that that sounds so interesting yeah I, I won't disagree that it it sounds interesting but it's not true it hasn't it's not in uh, it does not line up with the Bible all right at all all right and it's nothing but deception There's no truth to that stuff whatsoever that's not true this chart update says, oh, well, we're just making it up as we go. And then 17 days to trip, that's got to be a joke. But let's listen to a couple of seconds. Hebrew um, festival dates to these things. So we're going by a different calendar than the rest of the world. Uh, we didn't go with, uh -oh. with the 322 New Year's this year. And uh, so because of that, there's, there's this one month shift of alignment. And... So we've got actual true Hebrew calendar dates, and then we've also got some 
some guesses at, at when certain seals would be taking place. Some guesses. To win some cert. Okay. Alright. They're guessing about the seals. Alright, so let's. Wait for that semi to go by. Alright, so in the Bible, it talks about seven seals. Alright, in, in the book of Revelation, right? And, um,. I think it's from five to I don't know what how I got to think about this real quick. All right, I apologize, but this will this is going to be real simple. All right, so starting in in Revelation six. All right, so it basically the Lamb, which is Jesus Christ, is the only one who is able to open the seven seals. All right. And the first four seals are already open. Alright. Now, the white horse is Jesus Christ. And he is the one that conquers the world. Alright, he's conquered death. He has risen from the grave. He has ascended to heaven with the promise of his return. Now, what I say? Did I say the first four seals? Excuse me. I think I did. I meant I should have said the first five seals. I don't know if I did or not. But if I did, I apologize. The first. So the fifth seal are those that were slain for the word of God, and they cry day and night, saying, "O oh Lord, holy and true, does." Thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And isn't that interesting because there is a another verse that we read here. If I can think of the, how it's phrased. Let me find the verse here. Luke 18. Verse 8, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. All right. And again, verse 7, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? And in the fifth seal, they cried a loud voice saying how long O Lord holy and true dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth there shouldn't be any doubt at all that these first five seals have been opened and the sixth seal is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven so we can draw a parallel in Luke 21 all right when the sun and the moon and the stars now, there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and upon the earth the distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves are roaring men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then shall they see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory so this this is exactly parallel with what we read in Matthew 24 and Mark 13 about the end of the world. All right, just like it says in Matthew 24, verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken all right when the sixth seal is opened and i beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood and the stars of heaven fell onto the earth even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Alright, 
make no mistake about it this is not a different event this is the same exact event all you have to do is connect the dots all right in order to be able to connect the dots you have to have faith you have to believe the Bible that you hold in your hands without that faith it is impossible to see the scripture for what it is it's impossible to understand just like it what we read um, in uh, whatever verse that is um, I mean we 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 read numerous examples of this but there's the one that I like to point to and I can't remember right now it is 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17 even unto this day when Moses is read the veil is upon their heart because they do not believe nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord the veil shall be taken away so if you do not believe the Bible that you hold in your hands there's a veil over your heart and I'm telling you the key to understanding the Bible is faith it's always been about faith we read here in Hebrews 11 the significance of faith from the beginning to the end all right it's incredible uh, you don't think faith is a big equation it's a huge equation without faith you cannot understand this stuff and you won't be able to connect the dots even though you ought to because it's right there for everybody to see all right so you're making guesses of when the seals are open and it's crystal clear the first five seals have been opened the sixth seal is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and of course the seventh seal is eternal life all right and so that's it for today all right thanks wedding 105 1919 I appreciate the comments everybody have a good day